you know what time it is? We've got this sketchbook out. Today, we're going to be painting a scene from 101 Dalmatians. Get cozy, grab your art supplies, and let's get painting. If we make this coat, it would be as if I were wearing your dog. <laughs> The original 101 Dalmatians animation came out in 1961 and honestly I can't believe it's that old. I mean I had it on video so I guess I had no clue when it came out but I still didn't think it was that old. I feel like animation didn't really start looking very different until about Shrek. Before then, anything from Snow White to Pocahontas looked so similar in style. So I guess that's why I thought 101 Dalmatians wasn't actually from 1961. But there you go. I can't believe it's that old. Today we're painting the live action. The live action came out in 1996 and I think this is probably the one that I associate most with Cruella. The animation is a classic but the live action is so good. Cruella is played by Glenn Close and she does an amazing job. Cruella is an evil fashion designer that aims to steal 101 Dalmatians and she needs puppies because their fur is softer. And she wants to turn them into a spotty fur coat, in case you didn't know if you haven't seen any of the films before. I think I had the books as well as a child, to be honest. But I haven't seen any of the films in so long, so I'd actually forgotten. Obviously, I knew the main plot, but I'd forgotten everything around it and how it actually happens. Cruella scared me as a child. I think Glenn Close in the live action is scarier than the animation. I don't know, there's just something about her portrayal that's just kind of evil and she does it so well. But this time round, watching it probably like almost 20 years later, oh wow I am old. Glenn Close is amazing, she puts everything into the role of Cruella and I love the way that she makes the character so theatrical and cartoonish and so similar to the way that she's portrayed in the animation, which is quite the feat as an actor. She acts even more wild than the original animation. The laugh and all of her lines are iconic and most of the time she's actually talking sense. That's something I really noticed in this watch through as an adult. For the first half of the film at least, she has lots of great lines about feminism, saying how lots of talented women are lost to marriage, and when the main character announces she's having a baby, Corella says something along the lines of like, oh you poor thing, which is just a hilarious response. And I mean, in some cases, it is true. It's just such a funny response. She's heartless and funny and kind of likeable, but then she obviously loses us with the whole making a coat out of a puppies thing. I will say though, I found the intro very long. Half the movie is setting up the romance. And I mean, the romance is very spread up. They get married in like four days or something crazy. It takes so long to introduce each of the characters and because it's a kids film, it is a short film. There's a lot of films that I wish were like that, but because they're kids films, they have to be about an hour and a half. Shrek is one of them. The Shrek movies are only about an hour and a half and I wish they were longer. I feel like Cruella wasn't actually in the film very much though. Like she had her set scenes and then those scenes were over and you didn't see her for a long while. But out of those set scenes, I feel like she only has four or five. But I mean, they're all iconic. I actually rewatched this on Christmas Day. It came up on Disney Plus in the Christmas section, so we gave it a watch. I have no clue why it came up in the Christmas section though, because it doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. I mean, like the snow, so maybe that's all it takes to be a Christmas film nowadays, just a little bit of snow. The Christmas section was very dire, I must admit. After watching this, I actually watched 102 Dalmatians recently. And that was pretty disappointing. For some reason, I thought it was a sequel that followed the couple from the first, but I think I was getting it muddled up with the animations. The second live action follows one of the puppies from the first, but it has a new story and a different cast. I mean, Cruella's still there and she carries the movie. In the second one, Cruella has treatment and becomes good until Big Ben chimes and she goes crazy again. Which sounds mad and it's a really crazy plot, I don't know how anyone came up with that. But still, it's pretty funny to see Cruella be overly good, but you're not missing out if you've not seen it. I think I was getting muddled up with the animations. In the first live action, Hugh Laurie and Mark Williams played the two goons and they are so funny. 
Even as an adult, me and my partner were genuinely laughing at all of their interactions. It's Arthur Weasley from Harry Potter who plays quite a similar character in a lot of different things. And one of my favourite childhood movies was Stuart Little. So seeing Hugh Laurie as a villain was very odd, but he is a funny villain. It's kind of like slapstick comedy. It's a very similar humour to him in Blackadder. The film is genuinely tense for a family movie though. Both Cruella and the mute villain are very scary. So all of the threats being dealt with in a very slapstick manner just makes the entire thing funny. And it gives a real sense of justice because it's portrayed in a way where it feels like the animals are getting their revenge. Because it's a live action remake though, I think it's always going to be compared to the animation and to be honest, I think it uses all the benefits of a live action well. The dogs are adorable and mostly believable. Glenn Close is amazing and captures the energy of Cruella de Vil so well. Some scenes were shot as a direct comparison to the animation and I don't know how Glenn Close managed to make the same facial expressions as the animation, but she does it. And I think her portrayal will always be Cruella to me. My partner had never seen the live action version until now and the only change that he really noticed was that Roger, the main character, goes from a musician to a video game developer. I'm not really sure why that change was necessary but that's the only real change they made. Moving on to the painting now. Firstly, I would like to apologise for the lighting. The lighting was so bad on this day. I paint next to the window and I try my hardest to use natural light which has its positives and negatives. It means sometimes the lighting just does whatever it wants and it goes a little bit crazy. But on this day, it was like 10 in the morning in Britain and it was this dark. So there's not really much more I could do. I had to stick the lights on, but I hope it looks okay. When it comes to painting portraits, I think the hardest thing that I'm finding as an artist is the balance between painting a portrait that looks like someone and painting a portrait in an art style. I think it's difficult to navigate. This sketch really could have looked a lot closer to Corella than it did, but I do enjoy painting portraits in a slightly animated style. It's semi-realistic, but I like doing slightly bigger eyes, having a cute nose and a bit of a rounder face. I tried to let more of my own style shine through, which I think really worked for the last episode where we painted a scene from E.T. I love the way that I painted that portrait and it really represented my style so I wanted to try that again. It worked a lot better for E.T. but this was also a pretty difficult pose to be fair. I chose the scene where Cruella starts to show that she's a little bit crazy and she does the first psychotic laugh. It's kind of iconic so it's not my usual obscure scene but it is something different because it's a close-up portrait with teeth and a crazy expression so it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. I decided to keep the background really simple and loose so the focus would be on Cruella so that's literally just a wet on wet blue background and I did make the blues a little bit more vibrant than in the reference photo for a few reasons. I wanted to make the blue in her eyes pop a bit more and I wanted it to be a cohesive painting but I also thought that the entire spread would look really good if I made it a little bit more blue because E.T. is mostly red themed. As a spread it really pops. It's something I have to consider now ever since I accidentally picked and created two very similar paintings at the start of this series which I still don't know how I didn't see that but there we are. I do kind of want to consider how the two pages look together and how the flip through will look. For the red, I used cadmium red. It's my brightest, most opaque red and I think it worked perfectly. I also used some colour pencils to help with definition and a little bit of white gel pen for bold highlights. I usually keep this to a minimum but I kind of felt like it was necessary for the lipstick to be really shiny and obvious. So I made that a really bright highlight. Overall though, I love the colour palette and I think it's a pretty good portrait. It's not as good as E.T. last episode, unfortunately. And there's not too much likeness to Glenn Close. But I'm still trying to figure out my own art style, so I'm happy that I let myself have fun with this and try something a bit new. This one and all of my others in the scene series are now on my imprint store as prints and stickers. So if you're interested in having any of this art, then please consider checking that out. And if you've missed any episodes in this series, I will leave the playlist down below. 
In the next episode, we're going to be painting my very first rom-com, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that. What films or shows would you like to see me paint? Let me know in the comments down below. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and if you have, then please consider leaving a like. It really helps my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye-bye.